Today we're going to finish up chapter 29 uh, talking about capacitors. So here's a picture of a capacitor in a circuit hooked up to a battery. Just one little note here, this is what we call a switch. Okay, and this just allows us to either turn on or turn off the circuit. Uh, but we have a battery, we talked about batteries last time, and a capacitor is just literally two pieces of metal next to each other. Now what's going to happen is in this metal you have free electrons. And so when you close the switch, this electron now has a path to get over here to the positive side, which it wants to do. Okay, and what that does is it leaves behind a positive uh, in that piece of metal. And so then electrons over here at the negative side of the battery are like, hey, I want to get over here closer to that positive. Okay, and then essentially this keeps happening uh, while the capacitor charges up. And at one point the capacitor gets to its full amount of charge. Okay, and there'll be a positive on one side and negative on the other side. And this is essentially happening from electrons that are essentially traveling uh, from one plate to the other uh, via the battery. And uh, an important thing here is that the potential difference will always be the same in this case. Okay, if you look over here, if I'm one of these electrons, okay, I'm going to keep going over here to the positive side until the potential over here is the same as over here. So basically the potential here is say 12 volts, the potential here is 12 volts, and so when that happens, right, when it's the same potential, if I'm a little electron, there's no reason for me to transfer back and forth anymore. All right, so once it's fully charged, there's no more current. So current is basically the charges that are flowing through there. So that doesn't happen anymore. We'll talk more about current later. Uh, and it's charged up and it's ready to do whatever you want it to do. Uh, so this charge is ready to be used. And so capacitors are used in lots of different ways. Here's a little basic example. Okay, so here I have a capacitor and two switches. So if I close the first switch, I charge up the capacitor. So now it's charged up and this charge can do something. So now what I do is I close the switch up top and what's going to happen is electrons are now going to flow from one end to the other end because they want to get to the positive side. And as they do this, they're going to go through and, and light up the light bulb. And I use those charges and then when that's done, it's done. Okay, and that's how a capacitor might be used. You might charge up your capacitor, and basically what you do is you use it as like a little battery that you can control in different ways to do different kinds of things. That's one way to use a capacitor. Now the rule for capacitors, the big equation is right here, and we define this as the capacitance. The capacitance is defined as how much charge you can store per, per potential difference. So in that last example, I was using you know, a car battery of 12 volts. And so the larger your capacitor, the more charge you can store up in that 12 volt, uh, or from that 12 volt battery. Uh, the units are farad, and basically the larger the capacitance, the more charge you can store per uh, potential difference. And just note here that we can take this equation and solve, so there's three elements in this equation, and you'll be asked to sometimes solve for different pieces. And so by this equation, you can sort of make it into three different equations here that we use at different times. Uh, our most basic capacitor is the parallel plate capacitor, and that's literally just two pieces of metal next to each other. All right, and so we have uh, two pieces of geometry that really uh, determine the capacitance. One is the area of the plate, and D is the distance of the separation. All right, closer plates have a bigger capacitance, and then the larger area you have has a bigger capacitance. And here's this constant. We used this before, uh, the permittivity of free space. And so just a little example, here's our capacitor, all right, and we had three charges on it, say. Well, if we increase the area, there's now more room to add another charge. So increasing the area means more charge, all right. Now, by the same token, here's our initial capacitor. If we move it closer, okay, now those charges are pulling each other a little bit stronger, and so we can get more charge that way as well. Here's a picture of just some capacitors from circuits. This is what they might look like okay, in real life. Uh, and here is just one example. So some other examples of capacitors. In most keyboard keys, the keyboard is actually a capacitor. And when you compress it, you move the two pieces of metal closer to each other. And then your keyboard can say, hey, the capacitance just increased there. They just push the E button. Uh, here's another case, so these little things you'll see on TV and medical dramas and things, okay, that the charging up, you can hear it, the bzzz, that's the capacitor of these two pieces of the defibrillator charging up. And then the purpose is it's here to discharge it across someone's heart uh, to help with, with a heart attack.
Uh, just a little reminder, here's the E-field of the capacitor. Here's a picture and a drawing of it. Okay, but it is constant electric field in between the capacitor. We want to remember that. That's really important. We use this a lot uh, in this, this period of uh, 132. Now, most capacitors have what's called a dielectric in between them. This is usually some kind of an insulator. And the purpose here is it allows for the plates to be closer together. Okay, when those plates get closer together, it does allow us to have more charge. But at some certain point, you're going to get uh, the electrons jumping in between. Okay, and that'll be like a little spark. And so it reduces the amount of charge. So there's a certain point you can't store anymore. And so you add what's called a dielectric, an insulator. Uh, and there, each dielectric has a little K constant that we'll talk about in a second. So basically this is the same equation for capacitance, it's just this K constant increases it slightly. And here's the idea. So here's your capacitor, the positive side and the negative side, and your electric field points this way here. So the electric field from the capacitor points that way. All right. Well, when we put the dielectric in, it's just some piece of generally an insulator. And so what happens is the atoms polarize, and they get a little picture kind of like this. The negatives go towards the positives, and the positives go towards the negatives. All right. And so it makes an E-field that partially cancels out the original electric field. If we think about these ones in the middle, they kind of cancel out because they're so close to each other. And you're left with these positives and these negatives here. And so this would be an electric field that would point in the opposite way. So the electric field, the dielectric points in the opposite way. So it reduces the, this idea of the electrons wanting to jump across. And so it makes it so you can store uh, more charge on there. And here's a picture of that, uh, what a capacitor might look like in real life. So we talk about these parallel plates, but another way to do it is to roll them up like this. So the parallel plate's the easiest one to talk about, uh, but there's lots of different kinds of ways. And so here's a capacitor. It's basically two pieces of metal, and then there's a little sheet in between them of some sort of a dielectric. Here's a chart that you have from your book. Uh, and so, for instance, Teflon has the K constant of about 2. So that means if you put Teflon in between your capacitor, you increase the amount of charge you can store by twice as much. All right, and so we know that capacitors, uh, we can use them to, say, light a light bulb. We talked about that. So there's some energy that's stored in your capacitor. And how do we figure this out? Well, let's look at this. Okay, so the first charge. So what we've done here is we've basically taken a negative charge from this side, all right, and moved it all the way is essentially what we're doing to this side over to here. Okay, and now the work we do is the charge times the change in the potential. Well, when we first did the first one, there was no potential difference on the capacitor, so the initial work done was zero. Q times zero is just zero. All right, now we do our other charges, and then we end up our last charge before it's charged up. The work done there, okay, so it's the charge of an electron, so the charge of whatever our little tiny pieces. All right, and it's going to be times the voltage difference. Well, now the voltage difference is the same difference as whatever the battery was. So if it was 12 volts, our voltage difference is that one now. So it's the maximum voltage. All right, so the first one is zero. The last one is Q times V. So on average, you can kind of say that the average work is a half times our charge times V. And this is what it actually works. Oh, and here's a little mistake. So we use, for potential energy, we use a U in our class. So I'll put a U here. So U is equal to 1 half Q times V. Uh, so that's the total charge times the total voltage. Okay? And so that's how we uh, can write this. And you can also express this in different ways. All right, because we have our equation here, uh, Q equals C times V. That's just our capacitor equation. Okay, and so basically if you know any of these two numbers, you can figure out the potential energy stored. And again, for us, potential energy would be a U. Apologize for that. All right, so now we're going to look at how capacitors work when there's groups of them. So here's capacitors in parallel. We're going to talk a lot about things in parallel, so we want to talk about that, what that means. And in parallel, one kind of way to, to look at that is what parallel means is that I can go from, so here's like the right end to the right, I can go from the right end of the one piece to the right end of the other piece without hitting anything else. And I can go from the left end of the piece to the left end of the piece without hitting anything else. So those are in parallel. And what happens here is when they're in parallel, all right, so this is our basic battery. Let's call this 0 volts and this 12 volts. Okay, what happens is, is these things are going to charge up, just like we had them kind of charging up before. Okay, and they're going to charge up, uh, basically not even affecting each other. They can both do what they have to do. They're both going to charge up so that this end is 12 volts and this end is 0 volts, just like we did before. So in this case, they don't affect each other. Uh, and what happens is you just store more charge. 
Okay, so with, with the, the capacitors in parallel, uh, the potential difference will be the same. They'll both charge up to the 12 volts, but the total charge will increase. All right, and there we can equation, what we can do is we can replace one of the capacitor, or two of them rather, with one, just by going like here, but just by adding them up, C1 plus C2, that'll be the equivalent capacitance. All right. Now when they're in series, like so, okay, it's a little bit of a different story. So here what happens is if I'm an electron uh, over here, all right, I'm going to travel over here. So I'll be the electron, I'll travel over to there. Now what will then happen is an electron from here will travel over to here, leaving behind a positive. Okay, so an electron will travel from here, leaving behind a positive, because the electron is attracted to the positive that was left behind over here and then that'll eventually attract an electron over there. And so what'll happen is your charges will add up in a little manner kind of like this here, uh, where basically the charge on each plate is gonna be the same. Okay, and so with series, it's a little bit of a different story. They actually affect each other, and so the charges are gonna add up in this kind of a funny way here. Uh, the charge must be equal on each piece. And what'll happen is the potential difference of the battery will equal the potential difference of the two capacitors added together because of Kirchhoff's loop law. And then we can do here is just say, okay, so here we know that the, the total voltage of the battery equals the voltage drop of the two guys. We can bring in our capacitor equation. So for voltage, it's Q over C. And we know that these Qs have to be the same. So we get this really funny looking equation. Okay, so this is the way that if we have two capacitors that are in, um, series, we can find the equivalent with this kind of ugly equation here. All right, so let's try an example. Here's two, uh, two kinds of configurations of capacitors. I want to know is what's the ratio of the capacitance of these two guys. So give this a try and see what you think. Okay, so this can be really tricky at first. Uh, so the answer I get is A. So let's look at this and see if we can figure this out. So the easy one is configuration A. So CA, those two guys are in parallel. And so in that case, you just add up the two capacitances. That's kind of easy, just two times C. Now configuration B is when they're in parallel and you've got to do this funny equation here, which is a little, takes a little bit of getting used to, I think. Now here, what I can do is I can say, well, it's one over C plus one over C, that's two over C. And then what I can do is I can flip it over. So I know that CB over one equals C over two, which that just basically tells us CB equals C divided by two. So at some point, you're gonna have to flip that equation over. And then what they wanted in this problem was CB divided by CA. And so CB is C divided by two. This is two times C. The two C's cancel and I'm left over with one fourth. So to summarize, for uh, series and parallel capacitors, so when they're in parallel, here's the equation to find the equivalent guy. And again, parallel looks like this, and you're trying to replace it with one uh, capacitor. The charges um, of C1 and C2 are going to add up to the charge on the equivalent. And then the thing that's the same in parallel is the potential difference. So one thing is always going to be the same. Uh, when you're talking about these parallel and these series. For series, the thing that's the same is the charge, and then what's going to happen is the voltage drop across the equivalent capacitor will be the same as the voltage drop across the two. Now, I did an example problem that you can access from Portal as well, kind of dealing with this a little bit more involved.